Hi guys and welcome to module 5 and chapter 10. Chapter 10 is going to be on environmental health and toxicology and today we're going to be talking about an introduction to environmental health. You are on the home stretch. We only have three chapters left and the final is next week. Good luck on everything and I hope you guys get the most out of these last three chapters. Now when we talk about environmental health we talk about a field which is, assesses different environmental factors which influence different things associated with our quality of life and a lot of environmental health has to do with the association and the study of hazards. A hazard can simply thought be thought of as a danger or risk to us and our person. Now there are four major types of environmental hazards. We have physical, chemical, biological, and cultural hazards, all of which impact us in different forms and fashion. A physical hazard is something that arises from processes which occur naturally in our environment or in our everyday life. These are very physical processes such as UV radiation which may cause a sunburn, uh, falling down and breaking your arm as a result of an earthquake, getting frostbite as a result of being in the middle of a blizzard, or drowning for example in the middle of a flooding event. So again, physical hazards are things that physically happen to us in our environment. They are a, pro they are a consequence of different physical processes. Contrast that next with something called chemical hazards. Chemical hazards are hazards which are caused by exposure to chemicals, and these chemicals can be natural or synthetic. Now, synthetic chemicals can be things like exposure to pharmaceuticals, maybe a drug overdose. They can be an exposure to a disinfectant, so maybe some sort of indoor air pollution from you trying to clean down your countertop or your table. Or they can be something like exposure to pesticides in which those toxic substances can adversely affect our health. So when you think of chemical hazards, Hazard, think ingesting or being exposed to some sort of chemical which is harmful to our health. Next we have biological hazards. Biological hazards are caused from exposure to biological organisms. It has to be caused by a living organism. Now these can be viruses or bacteria and or their vectors and remember that vectors are organisms that transfer those diseases so if malaria is the biological hazard the mosquito is the vector of that biological hazard and that vector is also really important because we wouldn't be exposed to that biological hazard without the vector. Now, the last form of hazards that we're really going to talk about here are cultural hazards. And these are hazards that arise from our place of residence, some of our behaviors, so maybe our occupation and our lifestyle. This would be something like getting uh, heart disease from eating too much fast food, becoming obese from eating too much food in general, having lung issues as a result of smoking cigarettes, things that we do to ourselves or that are incurred upon us from our living, our living style where we live or how or where we work. So these are the four major types of hazards and we'll be focusing specifically on chemical and biological hazards for most of this chapter. Specifically within the context of biological and chemical hazards, we'll be talking about disease and we'll be talking about different forms of toxic substances, toxins, and synthetic toxicants. We'll be going over all of that in the next couple of lectures. But specifically, we'll be also talking about disease. Now, disease causes the vast majority of human deaths on the planet. And while we tend to think of infectious disease as being one of the chief causes of death on the planet, it is actually non-infectious diseases, which are far more insidious. Non-infectious diseases are diseases which do not de develop from a foreign agent. They normally occur within us. So it doesn't, it's not going to be something that we catch. So it's not going to be a bacteria or a virus. It's going to be something that arises within us naturally. Something more like cancer, heart disease, cardiac arrest, or Alzheimer's or anything that isn't necessarily caused by a foreign body. And non-infectious disease can cause up to half of the world's deaths. Usually non-infectious disease strikes older individuals and this is because non-infectious diseases are often the cumulative result of different things that have built up over time. If you're exposed to a chemical for a very long time that might damage your DNA and so when you're a little bit older you could get cancer. If you've eaten really fatty foods for a very long time, you just chow down on fast foods or McDonald's for X number of years, maybe 20 years years, you might eventually, when you're older, get a heart attack or get a clogged artery. These are all different forms of non-infectious diseases. So that because they build up, because they take a long time to manifest themselves as a result of the chronic exposure to different hazards or different cultural or environmental stimuli, these things normally affect us when we're a little bit older, usually your 50s, 60s, or 70s. Now again, in non-infectious diseases can't really be caught, but instead they're developed through a different combination of environment or genetics. The environment being something we just talked about or genetics perhaps we might be predisposed
predisposed to some of these diseases. We might be predisposed to building up plaque in our arteries. We might be predisposed to different types of cancer. So these are things that are going to be caused, maybe exacerbated by genetics and directly caused by exposure to different environmental stimuli. By contrast to that, infectious diseases are caught by foreign organisms. Now, when we say caught, it means that they can be, they can be transferred from individual to individual by contact with a foreign agent. That foreign agent can be a parasite, it can be a bacterium, or it can be a given type of virus. Now, while non-infectious diseases tend to strike older individuals, infectious diseases can strike people at all ages. Although it should be noted that those who are very, very young and those who are very, very old are typically those who succumb to different diseases, typically because they do not have a resilient enough immune system to fight off that infectious disease. Now, the leading cause of infectious disease are respiratory infections like the flu. However, the leading cause of non-infectious diseases are cardiovascular diseases. And it should be noted that cardiovascular diseases kill more people every single year, approximately 17 million people, than any form of cancer combined. So the majority of non-infectious diseases are going to be caused by cardiac diseases. The majority of infectious diseases are going to be caused by respiratory diseases such as flu and pneumonia. Now, moving a little bit further, a lot of this chapter is going to be looking at the study of what is called toxicology. Toxicology is a branch of environmental health which examines how poisonous a chemical is and how those poisonous chemicals will affect human health and the health of other organisms in nature, as well as infect different environments and different ecosystems as a whole. Now, toxicity, refers to the degree of harm that a chemical substance can cause to either an individual or a group of individuals. And it should be noted that there are some subtle differences in terms here. A toxicant is any harmful chemical created either synthetically or naturally. It's a catch-all term. However, a toxin specifically is a toxic substance that is created by a biological organism. So a toxin has to be, has to originate between within the cells of a different organism or within a living organism itself. It cannot just be something that occurs naturally in the environment as a result of a physical process or something synthetically that we created. So if it occurs in a organism, say that it's venom from a snake or poison from a poison dart frog, those are toxins. However, it's, if it's a synthetic chemical such as a pesticide or a disinfectant, those are synthetic toxicants. These are going to be distinctions that you're going to be asked to know on your quizzes and potentially on the final exam, so you should really pay attention to these distinctions. Now, environmental toxicology explicitly deals with toxic substances that came from and are discharged into the environment. So basically, when we talk about environmental toxicology, we're going to be looking at the study of plants and animals to see if they indicate human health threats. Now, while we spend the majority of our chapter talking about outdoor health hazards, we really should take a moment to first talk about indoor health hazards. And that's because, as we've noted in earlier chapters, modern Americans spend about 90% of their time indoors. And indoor areas are often rife with different environmental hazards. We know about some of them, like cigarette smoke, for example, which can permeate into fabrics and other substances and slowly let out poison over years and years. However, we might not know about some of the other major indoor health hazards. Things like radon gas, for example, which is a radioactive gas that seeps up from the ground and can cause lung cancer because we're inhaling radioactive ions over and over again. Asbestos is a substance that was formerly used during, as insulation and it is dangerous when inhaled and can cause cancer. In addition to this, lead was formerly used as a, a coating for piping as well as a base for paint and it can cause cognitive problems if we ingest it. Things like behavioral abnormalities and damage to organs and even death if we consume too much of it. In addition to all of that, PDBEs, which are polybromated diphenyl ethers, are a recent toxic that we are studying right now. They are present in things like aerosols, different fire retardants, things that we find in substances in computers, TVs, and different sorts of plastic. And this is a particularly damaging substance in that it is an endocrine disruptor. It damages different hormone pathways in our body and can really disrupt some of our bodily functions. Now, I do want you to note that cigarette smoke and radon gas are the two biggest indoor health hazards. Those two right up there at the top. You will get a question 
in both on your quiz and your final exam. So you should really make a note of that if you don't pay attention to anything else in this slide for indoor health hazards. Now, the, uh, there are often trade-offs and risks associated with all of these ha hazards. Remember that it's important to note that many toxic substances that we make, those synthetic chemicals, they're made for a reason. And they often play really valuable roles in giving us a very high standard of living. In addition, many of the impacts of toxic substances that we create can be avoided if they are managed and monitored properly, both in how we dispose of them and as well as how we use them. So a trade-off exists. One of the reasons that tech toxicology was developed in the first place is to give us information on how to weigh the risks and exercise appropriate management and monitoring so that we can make informed decisions as to which toxins and toxicants are posing an acceptable risk and which toxins and synthetic toxicants do not. Now, this is everything we have for the introduction to environmental health. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Next, we'll be talking about toxicology and toxicants in different biological organisms. I'll see you then.